if there is a point where it's becoming more of that harm than that help. It's true. It's and it's a tough true. one. Yeah. Because I can't tell you and only that person can. And you don't know how far your your persistence in an issue will spread. So even if you think you're doing the right thing, you may not have the perspective to look back and say, oh, but I've affected you know, some members of my community or members of associations and they're taking their time out and things like that. It's important, you're right, to, to absolutely take stock when you can and, and kind of get that third party perspective from your own instead of you and know. as a young person in all fairness peg you know you you brought up one particular example and i'm sure you, i knew you had more about we're, we're just focused <laughs> so you know the idea of a young person and i think that's really important because we don't really teach youth self-advocacy no. and i think it's so important as we decide what we do want in the world and and what we believe is right and we create our own sense of morality we must have an environment where that is then activated in a productive way and again just like the people who don't get some things about disability some people don't get how to advocate and again if we don't provide them the tools we don't consider them insensitive in the way they ad advocated we consider them unaware and it goes both ways mm -hmm. so awareness about how to be a good at self-advocate and when to cut your losses if it's becoming such an issue for you that your own health is becoming uh, challenged you need to be as I mentioned in check but on the same hand the goal of improving awareness so that the right is heard in other words what is reasonable is understood is the ultimate success in self-advocacy absolutely and I think that's that's what we really all strive for in any situation whether it's advocating on behalf of yourself in the workplace around an accommodation you might need which might be very minor mm -hmm. you know I need to get up and stretch every 15 minutes you know and then that's it but we need to communicate it we need to become advocates for it and I know you're one of those people who gets it and will certainly be a tremendous role model for other young people in advocacy issues so let me jump to our poll and our news before I say thank you to you, Peg, because I do have to tell you that the Canadian Paraplegic Association of Ontario gives six quick self-advocacy tips. And if you want to check these out, you go to cpaont.org. Number one, think about your body language. Number two, stay calm. Number three, don't use negative language when you're talking. Take notes, send a letter. And of course, propose solutions. Now, if you'd like to come to inclusionrevolution.com, you're going to be able to answer this poll. Do you think older buildings should be required to be accessible despite the cost to the owner? Check out inclusionrevolution.com to answer that. Peg Britton, thank you so much. We're going to see you next week with another Inclusion Revolution. Until then, I'm Tova Sherman. Have a great week.